What's up? All right, we're just getting things going now. We're kind of waiting for people to get into here. What's up, Jason? Hey, let's go ahead and stick that bad boy on right there. All right, we're just kind of waiting for like some more people to get in here. What's up, Vader? Just kind of waiting for some more people to get in here right now and kind of doing like some last minute things on the video. What's up, guys? We're just waiting for some more people to get in here right now. Just, uh, can you guys hear me okay, by the way? What's up, Zuki? What's up, Jason? Can you guys hear me all right? All right, cool. All right, I'm just making sure I'm putting up. Awesome, thank you. Um, I'm making up. What's up, Jod? Um, <clears throat> I have like my computer and stuff will be behind me. So I'll, instead of having to see like all of the, uh, instead of having to see all of the uh, comments and stuff on my phone, which I'm filming on my phone, by the way. I've never earlier said you're going to be. Yeah, it was like, yeah, Jason, it was like half an hour earlier. It was just kind of all kind of depended on like when I got home from work, kind of allowed me enough time to kind of get things going. So it said it was like around five. Um, then, uh, John, it's okay. Um, like after all this stuff, it's going to get uploaded on YouTube anyway, so you can rewatch it. So it's cool. Don't worry about it. Um, but yeah, Jason, I wanted to, um, I wanted to start a little bit earlier. It just all kind of depended on when I got home. So I said it was going to start like around five or so. All right, so let me uh, want to get these comments and stuff up here. Um, tech stream, I plan this to be, it kind of depends. Like, I mean, I have like a lot of notes and stuff to go over. Thank you for the, uh, for the nice short comment. Um, I have a lot of, um, I have a lot of stuff to go over. So probably about an hour or so, and then I'll get to Q and A. I'm going to try to keep it under an hour and then I'll be able to um, get to like Q and A questions and stuff like that afterwards because um, there's a lot of stuff to go over there for you guys okay still we got what's up matt what's up man hey man i specifically wore this shirt because i knew you were going to be coming what's up dj oh cool man what's up james all right let's get these windows going get these chat windows going. All right, cool. Now I can see. And no problem, Zuki. Let's get these chat windows going. Tuck, what's up, Tuck? <laughs> yeah, that's my boy right there. By the way, by the way, Tuck, Tuck, do I know a little something? Do I know a little something? Do I know where you are right now? Do I know where you are? I think I know where you are. Nice. Glad you're back, man. I'm going to try to come back into town. I'm going to try to see you soon. All right, we're just gonna wait maybe just a couple more minutes, let some more people get in here before we get started, okay? So thanks for all of you coming and hanging out for a little bit. Um, just to kind of give you guys just a real quick um, heads up. Uh, keep in mind that this is, um, <laughs> I'll, I'll hurry up, I'll hurry up, Doug. Um, keep in mind that this is a seminar, um, kind of like a mini training class uh, that's basically gonna discuss how basically how I got from zero subscribers to about 2,000 subscribers in about 90 days or so. Um, for the larger channels, that's not really a lot um, as far because for like the people who have like millions of subscribers, they get like 2,000 a day or the people who have hundreds of thousands of subscribers get like 2,000 like a week. So that's not really big numbers as far as they're concerned. However, for people who start from zero to now, 90 days is pretty quick. So there are a few things that I'm gonna be discussing within this, a few like tips and tricks that I believe that you can use as well. 
And it's just something that I wanted to share because I was getting a lot of questions about it and I didn't feel like I was expressing every piece of information that I could on like, you know, Instagram messages and, and Twitter DMs and stuff like that. Um, I, I love messaging everybody, but I just, I didn't feel like I was being fair in how much I was giving to them or how little I was giving to them rather. So that's what this whole thing is gonna be about. Um, also, keep in mind that this is a super chat. So I do have it turned on and um, basically once you get past a thousand subscribers, it allows you to have a super chat, which basically means that if you click on the, on the comment section, there's a little money sign. And that basically means that you can donate to the channel and any of that is appreciated. Of course, it's not required, but of course, it's just appreciated. And there's a couple things that happens because of that. One, any donations that comes towards the channel uh, basically allows me to keep this going longer. And <clears throat> it makes it so I can give you more videos a week and I can give you better tech per week. Also, the nice plus side of donating, because it could be like a dollar or two dollars or five dollars, whatever. It doesn't have to be this uh, any large amount. Um, that actually will highlight your comment. And that allows your comment to stay like on my screen for longer so it's easier for me to see it plus anybody who donates or does like the super chat um, then I'll be able to get to their question first and I'll always answer all the super chat questions as well it's just kind of like a way to say thank you I'll make sure that because you're contributing to me I will make sure that I contribute to you specifically and handle any kind of like questions that you have about your channel or just in general and I'll kind of work with you live um, through uh, through it and then I'll get to everybody's questions and stuff afterwards so again <clears throat> We're just waiting just a little bit longer. There's only like nine people and stuff that are in here right now, but we'll get some more people in here in just a second. The entourage is here. <laughs> I'm trying to see if I can get some music going on in here, but I gotta be careful about what I play because... Wait, what did that say? If you want to start a YouTube channel, should I show my face? Uh, yeah, why not? <clears throat> I think you should be personal in your YouTube channel. It all kind of depends on what channel you're starting, but it just uh, it just kind of depends on uh, on what you're trying to accomplish within your um, within your YouTube channel. All right. Probably give this about another another minute or so, and then we'll get this going. Okay. Give sure anyone other so successful number one. Number two, there, Oh, thanks, man. Thanks, Jason. Um, Sebastian, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, to kind of talk about what Jason says is that's that's going to be kind of one of the things that I talk about within this is <clears throat> you do have to genuinely love this. Um, getting into this is you're, it's easy to get into this for the wrong reasons, and it's easy to kind of fall into those traps, and it's easy to think that this is going to be like a short term win for you, but really this is like a long term. Uh, it's like a marathon. It's not a uh, it's not a sprint. Uh, I know that's a cliche way of saying it, but it, that's true. Uh, you know, for YouTube, it's <clears throat> it's the it's the hardest thing to do and the most fun thing to do at the same time. So, if you're going to be doing this and you want to take it seriously, then you do have to be genuine. And I think that's a really good way to kind of push your brand forward. Going to have to watch out. <laughs> I don't know, man. I mean, the the big tech. I don't know, Zuki. The big tech reviewers are. They, you know, they've been doing this for years, and while I'd like to get there, um, I don't think that they have to watch out because I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to come after them for anything like that. I think YouTube's big enough for everybody. I think there's a space for everybody. So um, I think everybody can be successful um, on YouTube, even if it's in the same genre or anything like that. I, th I think everybody helping one another out is kind of better for the community instead of trying to go after people. You know what I mean? Um, how old am I? I'm 32 years old. Don't let the great, I mean, granted that's old, than older than a lot of you are, uh, especially on YouTube, but like, don't let the gray hair fool you. I'm not like 40, I know I'm like 32, and but I look 42, um, but I've had gray hair since I've been like 19 years old. So it's just, you know, the, my friends call me the silverback gorilla. So I've, I've had that nickname for a long time um, and I'm used to people thinking that I'm older than I am. But um, 
but yeah, thirty two years old. Uh, not terribly old, but not terribly young, so it's fine. Anyway, um, oh, you notice that? Oh, you notice like <laughs> DJ noticed the little uh, Easter egg in there, a little subscribe pillow in the background. Also, how do I? There we go. <laughs> that right there is a little Chewy doll. It's a little Chewbacca doll. Okay. All right. It's been it's been ten minutes since it started. Um, let's let's go ahead and. Um, hey, James is forty one. Dude, you do look young. Hey, man. Okay. Made me feel. Made me feel way worse. <laughs> I look so much older than you. Um, all right. All right. Let's go ahead and just get this going. Okay. Um, so, <clears throat> for some of you that don't know, um, some of you, I, I know kind of on a personal level, um, like, D like DJ, for example, um, uh, James and all them, like, I, I know them a little bit more, like, on a personal level. Jason, I know, I know them a little bit more. I've kind of had more discussions with them. So, some people know some of my background, but most of you don't. So, my background is, um, first of all, my name is J.D. Prevost. Uh, I am the creator of JD Tech TV, and the um, uh, originally, as far as like my background for education, I originally went to Florida State University for marketing and journalism. After that, I uh, worked in marketing for a couple of years. After that, and I and it was it was good. Like I really liked it, but it just wasn't something that I saw myself doing for the long haul. If that really makes any sense, um, I was good at it, but it just it I lost my passion for it, so I ended up leaving that. And some years later, I ended up going back to school um, now in Orlando, Florida, which is where I live now. And I'm at University of Central Florida for something completely different, which is what I should have gone to in the first place, which is physics, uh, planetary science, and astrophysics. Mainly, I was just originally in my early life, I was afraid of math. I didn't think that I was very good at it, which naturally I'm not. But I learned as I got older that math is a language and just like Spanish, French, Italian or anything like that, it's easy to learn as long as you dedicate the time to it. Anybody can learn it, it's just a matter of the desire to learn it. Um, if you don't want to learn it, then math is annoying and stupid to, to them and there's there's not a, uh, and that's not wrong, that's just not a passion for you, it's perfectly fine. So with, with all of that knowledge of my background and marketing, um, having a lot of that stuff still sticking with me. And then now my physics and planetary science and all that stuff, all that knowledge, that has been very beneficial to me as far as starting a YouTube channel. Um, real quick, where am I from? I'm from Fort Walton Beach, Florida. It's up in the panhandle of Florida next to Destin, Florida, Panama City, that kind of area. It's up in Destin, Florida um, area. But um, I'm a Floridian, so my accent doesn't sound like that, but I was around a military base. So I kind of have a military accent, which is kind of a hodgepodge of a whole bunch of different kind of uh, accents. and. Zach, what's up, Zach? And uh, Zach is a buddy of mine. He's actually from the same area that I am. So, anyway, um, being able to have the knowledge for marketing and physics, and uh, basically, physics teaches you how to think analytically. So, it's easy for me to look at YouTube algorithms and kind of be able to see past all of this. And it's easier for me to kind of come up with strategies and tips and tools of how to be successful in this kind of medium. So, um, I figured that starting a YouTube channel would be pretty good because I thought that um, I like tech and originally what I got into it because I'm starting to see my student loans kind of piling up and I wanted to kind of create some sort of passive income for myself. I thought maybe if I reviewed some, uh, reviewed some tech and I put out some cool videos and I was able to contact companies, maybe they would pay me for sponsorships, maybe I'd get affiliate marketing and I'd be able to make money at literally as I sleep. People would buy things, you get a commission off of that and you make money as you sleep. Um, the, the, um, and uh, what is your idea about Arab uh, text YouTubers? Um, I, I don't have a problem with anybody being a tech reviewer at any part of the world. I think uh, I'd encourage that. But however, I'm gonna keep, um, from here on out, I'm gonna kinda keep all the answering all the questions towards um, after the talk. Um, otherwise, it gets a little bit distracting. No offense, but it does gets a little bit distracting. But I'll, I'll make sure to answer all this stuff towards the end. So I, I promise. Um, but anyway, the I, I wanted to create some sort of passive income for myself, and nobody told me that it takes a while to get all of that kind of stuff. I didn't know that it takes so much time and dedication to grow your channel to the point to where you're actually able to get some sort of monetary gain outside of it. So. I quickly realized that and I stuck with it because it, I got so much creative joy out of it and I was able to continue based off of that and 
that was what I came to realize was that being on YouTube is needs to be a passion. It doesn't need to be something that you'd go there for monetary gain only. So if you do that, you go for monetary gain, you say, well, I want to start a YouTube channel because I want to be YouTube famous and I want to make money. You're probably going to lose. And I, I know that sounds harsh, but that's the truth. You're probably, probably going to lose. Um, and what I mean by that is that your desire for and your need for money and fame is going to not going to have the patience and the longevity that YouTube requires. So a lot of times you're going to lose interest in it because you're going to try to find, you're not going to see the results that you wanted to see as quickly as you can and you're going to go to something, something else. So I think um, YouTube, it just, the biggest thing is that it requires patience. It requires a long, thoughtful process and it requires you to put in your time because a lot of these, like the people with millions of views in their YouTube page, they are they're years into it and a lot of times people have been doing this for years as well and their subs have only gotten to 150 500 you know something along those lines and they're wondering how why they're not growing and they don't quite understand and i get this these questions a lot and i get the sentiment a lot is they don't they're frustrated and they're afraid and they don't understand why it's not working so instead of being able to answer everybody um, kind of individually through like the Instagram and, and Twitter and stuff like that. I figured I would just do a, a YouTube live, almost said Facebook live, a YouTube live video and just kind of answer everybody at once and kind of give a more complete and thought out response on how to do everything. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. I kind of got into a little bit of my background and uh, enough of talking about me. Let's go ahead and help you guys out. So let's get started starts right now so the first thing that I want to talk about is clarity and more specifically about like what is your channel about and I want to talk about your ability to find your niche so a lot of you already have YouTube channels currently but if some of you are here and they don't have really a YouTube channel or you just have a YouTube account and you're wanting to make videos and you're not sure what to do or how to put them out or what message that you want to go to first things first is you have to find your niche. So my niche is tech. So think of it like YouTube is the is the box that we're in here for like this screen, right? And then a niche is a bubble. So you have a bubble that kind of goes about like this. So this is tech for me. This is the tech niche. And then what you want to do is once you found your niche, once you which you know there's different types of niches. There's or niche or uh, if you don't know what either of those words means. In other words, it means a specialty. Um, so you want to find your niche and then you can be like vlogging or a beauty channel or how to fix cars or a cooking channel. It could be any of these things. These are all niches that, that live within the YouTube space and something that you can occupy as well. And because YouTube is so crowded and because YouTube is so big, the only way to stand out is to take your niche and niche down. So now, you, when you're, now you're within your circle, you're within your niche and you've created a smaller circle, and you've created a niche down of something that's a little bit more specific. So my niche down is tech reviews. And if you want to niche down even further and hyper-focus it, which I do recommend as well, if you want to hyper-focus your niche, then my hyper-focus and my niche is that my videos are geared specifically towards helping people make better purchase decisions. So all the content that I drive, everything that I push out, the message that I push out is specifically designed to make sure that I give all the information that somebody can use to make a personal decision of whether or not they should buy something or not. Now there's products that I talk about in my, in my videos to where I say, yeah, absolutely, you should for sure pick this up. But what I mean when I'm saying that, that yes, I sh you should pick this up, I'm kind of talking about like you should pick up this thing. You know, you should pick up this type of thing. If there's like headphones or anything that are that are there, you should pick up these type of headphones. And I personally like these type of headphones that I'm talking about, but here's all the good things about this one. And I'm trying to educate you on what's the good and the bad in this specific headphones. So then you can apply that knowledge to something else. So now you have sort of a barometer and you're able to kind of have a filter of being able to learn how to tell if tech is going to be good or not, if it's going to pass your own test. So I'm never really going out of my way to say, yeah, for sure, buy this thing. It's more talking about kind of buying this one specific 
uh, type of item. And if you like the thing that I like, then great. Go ahead and go buy it. That's great. I'd, I'd like to help you um, figure out how to get cool stuff. So that's that's the that's the goal. So um, you have to figure out what your niche is, and you have to niche down. And then if you can, hyper focus it to try to figure out um, how to stand out on YouTube. Okay. Um, you want to do that because if the uh, what's up, the Raven. Um, you have to do that because if you, I ask people sometimes, I say, you know, what is your channel about? I'll talk to other YouTubers or people who have a channel and they want to talk to me about how to grow. I, I tell them and I, I say, you know, what is your channel about? Tell me about it. You know, explain to me what it is. And they say, well, it's kind of, it's kind of everything. I kind of have, you know, some, I do pranks and I do reviews of this and I talk about this entertainment thing and I kind of go, and I, I, I st tend to tend to stop them and say, oh, okay. All right. You're being too general. And the key for for people who are too general on YouTube is that if you try to reach everyone, you will end up reaching no one. And that statement is not, is just is so incredibly true. And um, what's up, Jonathan? By the way, everybody, real quick, Jonathan Sintes that just posted right there. I need you all at some point during all of this stuff, maybe afterwards, go and check out his page as well. Um, so. If you end up trying to reach everyone, you'll end up reaching no one because YouTube is too big to be general. Um, the YouTube algorithm doesn't reward people being general. The YouTube algorithm rewards people being hyper-focused because here's the secret about the YouTube algorithm. It's not a person. It's a computer. Uh, it's an AI. It's literally an AI. Um, so they have like, you know, it's a big black box and you know big, big server room obviously but think of it as a black box and you'll have computer engineers that will be putting in input into this algorithm into this computer saying like all right this thing is good consistency is good we want this thing to be on playlists we want this but this thing is bad so we want to make sure that you tell it that this thing is not really going to be all that great and then the computer side that sort of takes in all that input and spits out an algorithm and Nobody can really go out of their way to change it. It's just we can input things and we can say, all right, these are kind of the parameters that we want you to kind of live within and these guidelines we want you to work with. Um, but the computer itself does it all on its own. I mean, this is, this is, YouTube is kind of Skynet a, a little bit with light, slightly less scary. YouTube's a little Skynet. So it's all an actual AI. So, um, all of these things that you have, like with the with the YouTube algorithm, you have to make sure that you are being specific because when it's trying to find different videos, when somebody's searching for something in the search window, it's trying to find something that's hyper focused. It want it wants you to make it easy for the the AI program to find things. So the more that you hyper focus, the more that you focus down and make it just as fine tuned as a point. And all your content is just fine tuned. It is so so much easier for the algorithm to find you. It's very simple because if it knows consistently that you're doing tech reviews, if it knows consistently that you're doing a specific type of tech reviews or a specific type of blog, of uh, vlog, rather, it's easy to find you, and it reads all of the people's comments. So it kind of knows a lot of these, um, a lot of these different types of things. So um, what's hyper focus? Hyper focus. If you're if you're just joining a little bit late, I'm talking about. A niche, which is a niche, is a specialty. So I have a tech uh, specialty. My uh, focus down, my niche down, is uh, tech reviews. So you want to make sure that you are trying to be as specific as possible in your channel um, and not be general in the content that you're pushing out. Um, so you want to make sure that your branding is clear, your message is clear, and you want to make sure that your content is staying on brand because there's nothing worse than going to a channel and being confused because if if i was sitting here and you're used to every single friday i upload a video about tech reviews which this is by the way this is the only friday to date that i have not posted a tech review at noon on friday now granted this is a, a video still and it has to do with tech and i'm still on brand but but i uh Sorry, the comments are throws me off track a little bit sometimes. Um, but this is this is still something that uh, that I'm still offering um, to people, so it still allows me to kind of stay consistent with people. Um, sure. So if if anyway, sorry to get back to what I'm saying. I'm so sorry. 
Um, <laughs> if, uh, if, if people are used to coming to me for tech channel uh, or for tech reviews, and then one of the videos that I put out is my favorite recipes for an Instant Pot, which is still a technology thing. It's just an appliance. It's a kitchen appliance. And my favorite recipes for that, people are going to be confused. And you don't really, that's not really what you want to do to people. It's not fair to the people that are watching because the people that come, the people, your views should be looked at as precious things. Because even if you have one view, it doesn't matter if you have one view, if you have a thousand views, it, it doesn't matter. Um, you, uh, sorry, I'm trying to turn the, turn the stuff off. Um, it, it really doesn't matter because the, your ability to captivate someone, your ability to take the time away because there's so much information that's constantly coming into us at all times. That's the age that we live in. There's so much of that for you to captivate someone and for you to make them come to you for their time of leisure so that they sacrifice their leisure for your video, for your content. Jason, dude, thanks, man. That was so kind. Thank you so much, dude. You got to you got to post a uh, um, you got to post a, a a comment later because I need to I need to make sure that I get to you, dude. Thank you. That was that was very nice. Um, anyway, you have to make sure that man. That was so nice. That that threw me off. Um, you, uh, what was I saying? Um, oh, you have to make sure that you're staying on brand, and you can't have people come to you and and be oh sorry no views. That's what I was saying. God, man, Jason threw me off. Um, you have to make sure that you're staying on brand um, and you have to make sure that these views are precious. You have to appreciate everything. So the one view, you have to be proud of one view. One view. You have to be proud about that. And it shouldn't be taken lightly because you're captivating somebody. Um, so to kind of push past that, I'm sorry I'm rambling a little bit. Um, let's get back to this training part of it here. Um, you're going to see me kind of looking down. I apologize, but it's because I'm looking at my notes. I'm trying to uh, stay on, on topic here. Um, the next thing you want to think about is you want to stay uh, understand what your target audience is and who your target audience is. For me, for the tech space, uh, it's male, 18 to 35. And these are easy things to, this, this is easy to find out. But um, you can just simply Google this stuff if you have like a beauty channel or if you have a cooking channel, whatever, you can just Google. You just type in, you know, um, you know, like demographics for YouTube beauty channel or for cooking channel. And these things kind of things will come up on the other side of the Google search. It's pretty, pretty simple to find. Or if you already have a channel, it's easy for you to go into your creator studio and it's easy for, uh, for you to um, go into your analytics and go into um, your demographics and it tells you it tells you exactly what the percentages of the male or female that are watching your videos and it tells you exactly the top percentages of the ages that are watching your video so how you tell what your target demographic is you go under your analytics and it'll tell it'll have sort of like a bell curve a sideways bell curve of for mine it kind of goes from like uh, or this way rather it's probably gonna be easier for you to see um, it starts, you know, under 18, and then once it goes to 18, then to 22, then to 25, and then to the, it goes back down to 35. And um, they, uh, so those top three that you see, so like the top three percentages that you see that are in ranking, that's your key demographic. So it's important to know who that is, not specifically because you want to try to pander to that audience, you don't want to pander to them, but you, knowing who you're speaking to, Knowing who you're speaking to is the most important thing that you can think about. If, um, uh, which, which, sorry, I'm going to stop for just a second, guys. I, I, as much as I love all of you, you don't have to donate. It's perfectly fine. It doesn't, it doesn't bother me if you don't. You guys are free to hang out and learn as much as you want. Um, but I just went ahead and let you know that, uh, so you know that you have the opportunity to do that if you choose. If you don't, I'm not holding anything against you, guys. I understand. I'm, I'm broke too. It's cool. Don't worry about it. I'm a student. It's all good, man. Um, don't, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. Um, so you want to make sure that you are talking to your demograph and you are um, speaking to them in a way that they can relate to the most. That's how you can help drive your, uh, that's how you can um, drive your uh, content towards them. And it's easier for you to be able to send a message and it's, have a storytelling that they'll be able to relate to the most. So it's very important to understand who your target audience is okay um 
Next thing that you should really be thinking about is, and one that I don't think a lot of people really understand is, why should people be watching your videos? You, you, need to, you need to really ask yourself, really ask yourself that. Why should somebody watch your videos? Why? Um, you need to ask yourself what value you're bringing to your audience. What value you're bringing to your audience. Because YouTube, people make these videos and I, I see a lot of people getting their feelings hurt because they do put a lot of time and effort into these videos. They put their soul in their, and, and they, they feel like it's their being that's put into these videos and when they put it out in the world and they don't get the responses that they uh, that they want, they take it personally. And while I understand that sentiment, um, that's not really the way that you should be thinking about it because you have to think about what, <laughs> James, thank you. Thank you so much, man. Um, man, that's so nice. Um, you have to think about how you can give them something and that's why YouTube is kind of a special place because it's it's almost an altruistic society that can that continues to exist on the internet, which is strange because that's not what the internet is really known for. It's not known for this being a place to be nice. It's not, um, and that's really what YouTube needs to be thought of as, and that's the way that you need to approach YouTube in order to be successful. Is you need to think about you're servicing the community. You are a servant of the community. They're not here to serve you to 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 boost your ego, to watch your videos and to make you feel good. That's not the way that you need to do it. You are here to service the thing. We don't have a super chat done yet, but we want to show up. That's very nice. Um, you want to service the community. So that's the way that you need to think about your videos and what you're doing and how you approach the mindset of YouTube. It's not, it's not because they want to come here for you. You are there for them, period. That's just, that's exactly how it is. Um, people tend to fall short whenever they think about it the other way around. They tend to not be as successful as the other people. Um, so when you're thinking about the value that you're bringing to people, you need to ask yourself, like, what is your message that you're bringing to people? Are you here, are you, is the, is the video here to, uh, is it to motivate? Is it to inspire? Is it to educate? Is it to, is it for entertainment purposes or is it for informational purposes? You really have to ask yourself that, and then you have that's also part of your brand. So you have to stay on brand and you have to stay on message. That is your message. My message tends to be more towards the informational side with a little bit of entertainment because I want to I want to inform you about tech and I want to inform you about how my mind works and how I process tech and everything that comes into uh, comes into my hands. I want to kind of take you through my process of what I determine to be good or bad within tech. And then I want to add a little bit of humor because in real life, like I'm kind of a smart ass and I have stupid jokes and I just <clears throat> have a really dry sense of humor and I'm kind of corny. So a lot of my jokes and stuff like that, like kind of tend to kind of make it into my videos and they're real short, but I want to kind of add a little bit of entertainment to it. So it's kind of become part of my style is I want to, if somebody's going to come to me to, for leisure, I want to inform them and I also want to hope maybe make them laugh or just most of the time they probably just sigh and roll their eyes and 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 move on so it's fine it's my my sense of humor is not for everybody it's okay um last thing in this section is and i wrote this one down um because this is this is important with how this is laid out so pardon me for reading this but this is something that you need to take with you so if you have a pen and paper um because i have a lot of information i'm giving you i hope you're taking notes or you can just look at this later and um what Jonathan sent it. See, see, John. See, John. He's just John. Just I'm gonna I'm gonna pull Tim. John, you're amazing. Thank you, man. That's so sweet. What a sweetheart. Um, man. And uh, anyway, um, remember this sentence and keep this with you. Keep this with you. Okay. Um, he says, of course it's pesos. Uh, keep this. Keep this sentence with you. Uh, this is something that you need to live by. This is a mantra that you need to live by when you're thinking about YouTube, okay? Um, DJ, I'll see you later, buddy. Um, defining your target market and niche is the single most important business decision you can make as a creative entrepreneur. I'll say that again. Defining your target market and your niche is the single most important decision that you will make as a creative 
entrepreneur. Think about that. I need you to really think about that because that is what everything boils down to. Everything within that one sentence, defining your target market and your niche is the most important decision that you will make as a creative entrepreneur because like it or not, YouTube is a business. You are here because you are trying to approach it like a business. And the people who are trying to grow on YouTube, you have to think of it as a business. There is a space on YouTube for leisure. You're able to kind of do this casually, but you're not gonna have the growth that you want. So if you wanna take this seriously, it's a business. You have to think about that. And you, as a YouTuber, are a creative entrepreneur. I want that to wash over you. You are a creative entrepreneur. You can put that on your, uh, you can put that on your um, business cards. That's exactly, that's exactly what you need to have on your business card. You are an influencer first, and you are also a creative entrepreneur. Okay, so keep those things in mind. It's, um, it's easy, it's easy for you to be, to get lost and think that this is just kind of some sort of silly thing because a lot of the responses that you're going to get whenever you tell people that you're a YouTuber, specifically from family and friends, um, probably more so from family. Uh, they're usually a little bit more forthcoming in their opinions to you. Um, they might they might not be as um, nice about or supportive about you doing this. And you need to have the courage to stand up to that and you need to have the courage to take that criticism and turn it into success. Okay? Um, Alan, I'll see you later, man. Have fun. All right, so the next section, and this section is the largest section. Um, so kind of once I get past this section, this is like the meatiest portion of it, the rest of it will kind of go really quickly and I'll be able to get to Q&As after this. So after this, we'll pretty much be close to being done. Uh, this next section is uh, probably the most important. This one is about consistency and quality. Also, uh, the mindset of how to approach YouTube and how to grow your YouTube. That's what this whole video is about. It's how to grow your YouTube channel. Um, first things first. When you're approaching YouTube and if you want to take this seriously, what's up, Jason? I'm glad you're here, man. Um, you're here for the most important part. Um, when you want to think about YouTube and if you want to take this seriously, you need to be all in. And I can't, I can't express how important that concept is, is you need to be all in. Because a lot of what people do is they, they treat YouTube as a hobby. So they kind of think about it, they go, okay, well, you know, like, uh, you know, when's the last time that you uploaded a video? Well, I uploaded it maybe, I don't know, 10, 12 days ago. When's the next time you're going to upload? I don't know, whenever I have some free time, whenever I have spare time, I'll, I'll, I'll get to it. That's typically what I do. I just kind of get to it whenever I can get to it in free time. Oh, okay. That's not going to work. Um, you can do that, and you might get some subs from time to time with people randomly finding you. So you might get some subs, you might grow a little bit, but if you want explosive growth, if you want to be successful on YouTube and start to make this a full-time career, you have to be all in. You have to go from a hobbyist to a pro athlete. There is a huge jump in between those things. So you have to be willing to take this medium seriously as a job and push yourself to the dedication of a pro athlete. We all know how they are. They're, they eat, breathe, sleep this stuff and that's what you have to do with YouTube you have to eat breathe sleep YouTube this is a job this is a lifestyle you are a youtuber you are not a bank teller you're not a server you're not a financial aid officer you're not I don't know why I keep going for bank stuff um, <laughs> you're not anything you're not a marketer whatever you're a youtuber that's your job that's your title that's your career and don't be afraid to say that don't ever be afraid to say that you're a youtuber you are important in this space and you can create your own empire on YouTube. And don't let anybody ever tell you that you can't do these things. You just have to be able to look at the people who are doubting you. You have to be able to look at the family members who aren't necessarily as supportive of you, uh, which you know we hope that all of them are, uh, but a lot of times we, we do run into problems with that kind of stuff, with people not being as supportive as, they, as you want them to be initially. Take that disappointment that you have and turn that into success. Take that, those failures in a way and drive yourself past that. If you've been a YouTuber, if you've been having uh, things on, on YouTube for years and you only have a couple hundred subs 
and you're wondering why you're not growing, good. That's good. Because you've failed. Because you know what that feels like. You know what failure feels like. I know what failure feels like. I have failed so many times in my life. So many times. You have absolutely no idea. I will actually share something extremely personal with you guys. Um, I wasn't planning on sharing this, but I'm just going to go ahead and do it right now. I have something called a ticky phobia. Ticky phobia is the fear of failure. So what happens is that you are so, you have a fear, just like somebody has a fear of cockroaches or a fear of spiders, it's the same feeling. You have a fear of the feeling of disappointment and failure. What happens is that you end up not doing what you should be doing in the first place because you were afraid to fail at that thing. So you end up not doing it in the first place because you're so afraid of failing that you just don't move forward. You are stagnant. I've been dealing with that for a very long time. So I'm able to overcome that. Um, I have to remind myself every single day that this is something that I have to live with and something that I have to push forward through. Um, what's up, Harry? give you a shout out man what's up man um harry bowles yeah that's <laughs> i had to say the whole thing i read it and i thought of whether i should say that and i said it anyway it doesn't matter i get it it's a good joke anyway um you you have to be able to understand that this failure is okay and how you push past that is the type of person that you'll become and what i've become is a better man because I've been able to surpass this fear because I've been able to take failures and turn them into success. And that's why we're here. That's why you're here listening to me. Um, and that's why we're able to grow together, be friends, and communicate with one another on this amazing uh, YouTube medium. Um, next thing that you really need to think about is, uh, I've already kind of touched on a little bit, if you're getting into this for monetary gain, it's not necessarily the best reason to get into it. Um, you have to have a deeper passion for this type of thing. Um, it has to, it requires patience. YouTube requires an immense, immense amount of patience. People can, <clears throat> I mean, J Jason uh, at JSO Reviews, please go check out his channel. Um, he can attest to this. He put out a video not that long ago to where he said, you know, he's been doing this for a year. Um, he passed the thousand subscriber mark. Please, everyone in the comments, please congratulate Jason on passing this uh, thousand subscriber mark. That's huge. That's that's something worth applauding. And <clears throat> it took him a year to, uh, to get there. And it's it's something that he can attest to that it does take patience. And because he was so patient, and because he is so patient with his craft, he honed his craft, and he was able to make his videos be as amazing at the, as they are. And he was able to reach his goal with the time of, um, w with patience and with grace. He was able to get there. Um, so that's something that everybody can do. Everyone can get there. It just takes a little patience. If you're getting into this for monetary gain, for quick monetary gain, it's not going to work for you because you're going to lose at YouTube. You're going to lose your patience. You're going to try to go do something else. So uh, you have to have a passion and a deep passion for storytelling on this medium and for the sake of storytelling. Um, also, as far as the YouTube algorithm is concerned, um, as far as how much you need to post, you need to post at least once a week. At least once a week. Okay. I post once a week and while that's kind of a, a, a really, really low minimum, that's like the lowest bar that you need to be at in order to remain relevant um, then you can post more um, because the YouTube algorithm rewards people who post on a more consistent basis but once a week is an absolute minimum that you have to stick to um, I'm able to kind of stay relevant within um, within the YouTube space posting once a week because of all of these other things that I do on top of just posting once a week so um, which the rest of this stuff I'll kind of get into and I'll, I'll be able to touch on that stuff as well uh, for all these other things that I do. Um, so I'm able to stay relevant because of that and if you take all of this advice and you can apply it to your channel as well, um, then you'll be able to stay relevant as well. So <clears throat> if you can post more than once a week, I would love to post more than once a week. I would absolutely love to. However, um, I currently 
I'm not able to because I understand the um, limitations. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and show you that, that pillow later. Um, the, um, real quick, uh, Matt, what do you mean by buy and return? Actually, we'll, we'll get to that. Ask, ask me that question later. Ask me that question later. I don't want to stop. I don't want to stop. I want to kind of get through this. We've been going for quite a while. Um, you have to post at least more than once a week if you can. Um, but the way to tell, if you're already posting once a week, um, if you're already posting once a week, then the way to tell is whether you should post more um, is you need to think about your videos on a scale of 1 to 10. So 1 being complete garbage. You would never show your closest loved ones this video because it's the most embarrassing thing that you've ever done. You can't believe you even thought about making that video or even pressing the record button for this kind of thing. That's a, that's a one. A 10 is something that it's so good. It's probably the best thing that you've ever done in your entire life and something that you would probably be willing to put into a time capsule to show future generations. It's like that. Like 10 is like that. It's that good. Most people don't put out 10s and most people don't put out ones. So where you need to stay uh, as far as when you're uploading once a week, you need to stay around the seven to nine range. Um, stay within that seven to nine range. So add kind of whatever your thoughts are as to what makes a seven and what makes a nine for you because it's very different for me as it would be for you. Um, then <clears throat> make sure that you stay within that. Don't post anything that's below, uh, that is below a seven, okay? So if the way that you can tell of how if you should post more than once a week, if you can post more than once a week with all the other things that you have going on in your life, is the next video that you're going to be posting going to be a 7 to a 9? If the smaller amount of time that you have to dedicate to the video is causing it to fall below a 7 into the 654 range, it's not worth putting out. It's not worth hurting your brand and hurting the trust that you have created in your community that they will trust that they're coming to you for content that they like. It's not worth ruining that credibility. So you have to kind of experiment with yourself. So I've been experimenting um, to try to see with all the things that I do, I work, I go to school, I have this, I have a wife that I need to make sure that I dedicate a large portion of time to, I have friends. All of these things um, get in the way of doing more YouTube videos, maybe not in the way, but it's it's other things that I need to consider and that I need to have priority um, over YouTube in a lot of different ways. So I'm not able to do more right now. If I wasn't in school, perhaps I could do more. Um, that would take a lot of time off of my plate and I'd be able to give you more. But you're not able to, if you're not able to put out something that's within your seven to nine range, it's not worth it, okay? So just stay to the once a week if you don't think that you can do that. That's just a little, a little inside kind of tip thing. Um, the next thing I want to discuss is, um, oh, uh, the other question is, can you post too much? So if we want to talk about the smallest amount that you can post, what's the maximum amount that you should post? What's the absolute max? Can you post too much? Yeah, you can. Um, only in certain mediums though, in, in certain genres, in certain niches, you can post too much. Um, if you're a vlogger, doing daily postings is encouraged. That's typically what people do. Um, you can you can do like five days minimum on a vlog and you'll still be successful. I've seen a lot of vloggers do that to where, but as long as you're consistent, that's the thing, right? Consistency is key. So if you're a vlogger and you do and you only put vlogs out Monday through Friday or Tuesday through Saturday or Wednesday through Sunday, whatever, as long as your viewers know that, as long as they're aware, of that, then they're not going to get upset. They understand what they're going into. They've seen that you only post on these days and they're not going to come to you and they're not going to expect uh, for you to have videos on certain days. So you can post as many times as you want if you're a vlogger, if you can do a daily or you can do once a week, who cares? It's fine. Um, you're not going to be quite as relevant as a vlogger doing it once a week, but doing it five times a week at minimum is best with the YouTube algorithm. Um, but as long as your viewers know that, it's fine. You don't have to do it every day. If you're a cooking channel, you can do it multiple times a day. You can put up recipes for lunch and dinner. Um, I've seen channels that do that. I, I look at a lot of those channels and figure out uh, things that I want to cook in my own house. They post like two times a day for like lunch and dinner recipes. It's awesome. Um, I can always come there and I can always find something new, which is great. It's just very difficult to do that. Um, but as far as tech is concerned, for me, um, three times max a week. Absolute max. Anything over that. Anything over that and you're 
boring your audience. You're lulling them into your formula. You're revealing your formula and you're taking them through the steps. And um, Vader, I'll see you. Uh, see ya. And uh, have a good night and you'll be able to watch this um, on the replay. But for a tech reviewer, there there is a formula that we kind of go through for our videos. You know, there's kind of beats that you follow. And <clears throat> if it's more than three times a week, uh, you tend to get bored of it because there's only a certain amount of ways that you can express, you know, what this thing is or what this thing is. There's, you know, or this kind of stuff. Like there's only, there's only so many ways that you can say this kind of stuff. Jason, I'll see you later. Thank you very much. Um, I, again, I really appreciate you, Jason. I'll, uh, I'll see you later, man. Um, you can only do that a certain amount of time. So yeah, you can post too much because you end up kind of like lulling your audience to sleep because they're, they're simply just seeing you too much and they're not seeing enough new information coming at them. Okay, so, so can you post too much? Y yeah, you can. Um, so just be mindful about making sure that your audience and your storytelling is new in some way. And uh, posting once a week is kind of a, kind of a blessing in a little bit because I create an anticipation People know that I'm going to be there consistently on Friday at noon, so they know they have something to look forward to. It's why I do it on Fridays, and they're able to look forward to something at the end of the week. Um, Raven, the stream's probably only going to go about for another like 30 minutes or so, and then I'll get to Q and A's um, after that. <clears throat> um, so the next part of it, um, oh, the, here, and it, this is something that I, I wanted to express. I didn't have it in my notes. Something creative that you can do for your channel is uh, you can test out different type, you can experiment with different types of videos. So for example, for me, um, I do tech reviews on Fridays and then for my 100, 500 and 1000 subscriber uh, marks, I did three videos for those things where I basically just did this kind of thing, this sat down and um, yes, tech stream, this video will be up later. Um, so I sat down and just kind of talked to you and just kind of expressed whatever thoughts that I had in my head and I got very positive reviews uh, or not reviews, but very positive responses about that. Doing things like this, this is a different type of thing, because if you think about your channel as a television network, if you think about your channel as like NBC, for example, so not everybody likes every show on one specific network. They usually like a couple shows that's on there. So like on NBC, uh, the show This Is Us, um, I like the show, my fiance, or my wife rather, loves the show, and I've watched a couple of it. I told I typically tend to binge watch things. I don't like watching things from week to week. I wait till it's done and then I'll watch the whole thing. And I watched a couple episodes of it and it's good, but damn it, that show makes me cry. I mean like full on like, ugh, like ugly cry, like bad, like ugly cry. I don't, I don't have a problem admitting that at all. So <laughs> like I like that show, but not everybody might not like that type of thing. And um, yeah, I know, wife, my bad. And uh, it's new, man. It's new. I got I got married on May fourth, so it's new. So relax. Um, not everybody might like not like the show. This is us, but you might like another show that's on there, or like on AMC. Some people might like The Walking Dead. Some people might not like it because the zombies aren't scary anymore. Yeah. Um, so if you do different types of videos, so that's why I'm doing this type of videos because. There might be somebody out there that wants to find a video about how to grow their YouTube channel. The granted, this is going to be a nice long one, so they'll have a lot of information to go through. And if they like the way that I speak, if they like uh, the content that I'm giving them, if they like the value that I'm giving them, then maybe they'll look at my channel and they'll see other videos that they might not have found otherwise because they're not searching for tech videos. But maybe because they like this video so much, they're willing to give me a chance on the rest of my videos. So that's a way to engage with different types of people. And um, thank you everybody. Um, that's a way to engage with different types of audiences and different types of people while staying on brand. I am staying on brand with this type of stuff. The 100, 500, 1000 subscribers was a way to reach my own subscribers and say specifically thank you. And that was able to reach other audiences because other people shouted me out while I put those things up. So that was a happy coincidence. Um, I didn't plan that or anything like that. And the um, the doing these different types of videos is, is able to reach different audiences while staying on brand. Um, the next thing that you need to think about as far as uh, your your videos and how the production needs to come across is audio. 
So all of you have said already that this audio is very clean and crisp. I did a little like people that were here when it first started, I was asking them if they can hear me all right. And the audio is very clean and crisp. If I don't care, I don't care how awesome your video looks. I don't care how much production you put into it. Don't care. Don't care what you're saying. If I can't hear you, I'm not going to watch it. Period. It's not going to happen. Um, if I can't understand what you're saying, it's not worth it. So you have to make sure that your audio is on point. So there's a couple different ways that you can do that. There's a couple different cheap ways that you can do that. I film on my phone. Um, you don't need this expensive DSLR, which granted, I will be um, I will be upgrading to one at some point in the future. There's just a lot of different things that that DSLRs can do that uh, phones can't. But you know, the iPhone it does a pretty good job. This front camera does um, 1080p, so it's fine. The back camera does 4K. It's great. Um, there's a lot of different things that a DSLR can do that this just simply can't. Uh, but this is fine for now. So if you are using your phone, if you're starting out on YouTube, use your phone. You don't need a DSLR camera. Use your phone because they're awesome. Um, so in this one, you can do a couple different things. There's like a $20 option to where you can get like a lapel mic where it just basically just sits there. Um, I have an iPhone 7 Plus and you have a lapel mic that sits here and uh, that's a pretty good one. It, they're like 20 bucks. It plugs right into your phone and you can pull the, uh, the audio from that. And while I don't recommend those for long term because the sound that kind of comes from those is very typical, like you can test this yourself. So you can be talking and then put your hands over your ears like this and you'll hear this sort of like bass and it's the, the, the ranges kind of flattens. So there's not really any of these like ranges or anything like that because the audio is coming from here. It's coming, it's reaching audio that's coming out of your neck and out of your throat and it's kind of hollowing out on the bottom. So it doesn't really, it's not a great long-term um, solution for good audio, but it's a good temporary one. It's a good one to start out because at least if you're starting out with a lapel mic, you can always go up from there. So, or you can invest a little bit more money with, uh, like for me, I have the Rode Video Mic, uh, Rode Video Micro microphone. Um, it's a lot to say. Those are about 60 bucks and it's a little bit more of an investment to get into. Um, this is a directional mic, which means that if I'm standing in front of it and if I'm talking directly to it, it picks up the audio really well. If I go over here and if I'm talking this way, it tends to dip out a little bit. So you can see like the audio kind of changes a little bit depending on how I'm like moving my body around. But if I'm standing right in front of it, it picks up my audio incredibly. Um, there's a, other mics that are a little bit more expensive, which pick up the sound basically everywhere in like a 360 all around. And I initially bought one of those. I bought a Rode microphone that did that was kind of like an, an omnidirectional, or not omnidirectional, but a uh, it, it picked up the sound everywhere. The problem is, is that my computer's on, and my computer's fans are kind of loud, and I'm working on quieting those down. But whenever I had the audio on, it it picked that up. So there's like this low mm, kind of thing at all times. With this, at least I was able to kind of point it in a direction where the computer was kind of off to the side, so it kind of dulled that noise. A little bit so there's different options that you can do to make sure that your audio is amazing which this thing 60 bucks it's an investment sure but in the long run as far as like the year is concerned um, and as far as your your overall YouTube channel uh, is concerned spend 60 bucks invest in yourself invest in your channel and make it better than it is today make it better tomorrow than it is today so just I mean I have I have the video road mic and again all of this stuff I kind of planned out what I was gonna say kind of um, but as far as like products and people that I'm going to talk about, I did make sure to put them in the description down below. So it's all already down there. So you're able to, uh, kind of go down there. Um, need to find a budget solution to making videos. Keep that question in mind, Zuki. Um, ask me that kind of stuff and I'll be able to help you in the Q and A. Um, I can talk just, I can talk about that. So, um, the last thing that I want to cover in this section, and again, this was the largest beefiest section. So once we're kind of over the section, We'll kind of move pretty quickly towards Q&A. Um, you need to be forward thinking in your YouTube channel. You need to anticipate what your audience wants to see. So prime example, tech reviews. So I want to speak specifically about tech reviews. This is the way that I structure my mindset to what I'm going to be doing week in and week out, what I'm going to be reviewing week in and week out. Um, right now outside, it's nice and sunny. It's beautiful outside granite in Florida it's always hot uh, we have about nine days of cold 
and they're not always all on the same in a row. It's just like one here, one here, one here. And cold, cold is like 30 degrees, but that's at like four o'clock in the morning. Um, so it doesn't really get all that cold here. It doesn't even snow. So it's usually pretty nice out here. However, as far as the rest of the country is concerned, this is a time where things are starting to become more green. Things are, summer is here, spring is ending, and everything, birds are chirping, and people are getting outside more. People are working out because they want to get their summer body back. They want to get that gym body. They want to go to the beach. They want to show off. They want to get girls. Girls want to get guys. It's, it's the season. So you have to think about the time of year, and you have to think about what people are doing at that time of year and what they're going to be doing in the next 30 days not what they're doing tomorrow what they're doing in the next 30 days because your videos don't always get the exposure that they deserve right away unless you have a large following if you don't have a large following uh, about you need to allow yourself about 30 days for it to kind of go through the algorithm and allow it to live on YouTube and allow the algorithm to plug it in to its formula to allow it to be found so you need to be thinking about 30 days ahead. So it's nice outside, it's colorful outside, which is exactly why the last couple reviews were on these specific things. An RGB mechanical keyboard, because it's colorful, people are seeing color outside, they're seeing green, they're seeing nice colors outside, they're seeing flowers. So this RGB lights kind of goes very well with that, it goes very well with the mindset. Also, the very next video was also an RGB Bluetooth speaker. That's the Shava Bluetooth uh, Jewel speaker. I, I really like it, actually. Um, I did a review on that, again, for the exact same reason, because that's within people's mindset that uh, it's summer and it's more colorful. And then lastly, the last video that I did was on the Alien M8 earphones, which are budget earphones. Um, they're fantastic, actually. I really like the Alien brand. People are working out. They're getting ready for the summer. Summer's here. They're going to the gym. So they need new headphones and new earphones for the gym. So you put out a video about that. Guess what? They're searching for it, and I'm getting traction on it because I was able to think ahead, and I was able to have enough wherewithal to be forward thinking to anticipate what my audience wanted. So this is that's kind of like an inside tip to how you need to process what you're going to be doing. So you can take this information and you can use this in vlogs, you can use this in cooking, you can use this in whatever. You have to be forward thinking and anticipate and be a little bit Nostradamus-esque and try to guess what your audience needs. And that's the way that, um, James, nice. I'm glad that you got him. I'm glad that you like him, man. Um, that's the way that you need to uh, think about this. And lastly, before I move on to the next section, probably one of the most important things about YouTube is to be yourself. Please, be yourself. Do not pander to an audience. Do not say things because you think that that's what they want to hear. Just be yourself. Because there are people, there's 7 billion people in this world. 7 billion people. We're approaching 8 billion people here pretty soon. So, there are no shortage of people out in this world that are like you. So you're never alone and you, you can't just be somebody else. You can't go on YouTube and you can't find an MKBHD or you can't find a uh, Unbox Therapy and just be them. You can't mimic them. You have to be yourself and the story that you tell to your audience has to be your own and people will find you. People will find you, okay? Yes, we have 7 billion people and we're closely approaching 8 billion people in the world um, being alive. So that's coming pretty soon. So just let you know. All right, so that's the beefiest section. And um, uh, that's the beefiest section. And so we're kind of like approaching basically um, kind of what you do after you upload videos, social media, things like that. Then we'll get on to q and I have this whole section here. I have this whole section called how I structure my videos. And I don't know if this is interesting to you guys. I kind of left this one up to, uh, it's basically the process that I go through from like start to finish of like writing a script and like how I do all that kind of stuff. I can go over it about three minutes and do that, but it's not really all that interesting. I don't know if you guys were interested in hearing about that. I'll most likely probably get to that kind of stuff in the Q&A. But if you guys would rather just get to the Q&A, I can skip that part and I'll kind of get to that part faster. So some of you kind of let me know what you think. I'll kind of look at the, um, look at the comments here to hear how you script stuff okay so I got one 
for you. Take this time to take a nice sip of water from my tiny mug here. All right, Zuki, sorry, man. I'm not getting a lot of responses from it, so I'm just going to move on. I'll, I'll cover this stuff in the... If you ask me... Um, if you ask me about these kind of questions about how I do this in the Q&A, then I'll, I'll get to that part. But I'm gonna, I want to move on from this stuff because this has gone on long enough. Um, so <clears throat> the next section is you made the video. You're done. You're ready to upload it. So the first thing that you need to do um, whenever you're uploading your videos is when you upload, make sure that you set it to private first, please. For the love of God, do not set it to public when you're about to upload it. Set it to private upload the video let it get there because there's a lot of editing that you have to do as far as setting your video up for success before you publish it so first thing you do set it to private to do that um, what's up trucking what's up man glad that you're here um, so what do you do after you upload the video so you'll set it to private next thing that you need to do is you need to create a title you need to create a title that's catchy you need to create a title that's very descriptive to your video and it needs to be very clear and very concise. You can do a lot of different things. You can just you know, be very clear with um, very matter of fact as to what the topic is about. You can pose a question. Like for example, in my M8, um, the Alien M8 earphones, I pose the question of the best budget earphones, question mark, and then I put a long dash, Alien M8 uh, review, headphones review. So that kind of like causes people to have a a thought process that when they watch the video they go into it knowing that there's going to be an answer one way or another um, you can do different things like uh, like the Raven said um, you can do clickbait kind of stuff and sometimes that works in a way as long as you're not doing it maliciously you know like as long as you're not like putting up like uh, you know like I don't know think of the worst thing that you possibly can top 10 nudes of whatever celebrities Blah, blah, blah. That's a, that's a really terrible one. Um, but then it's like a video of like a tech review or like a cooking channel or like just you like sitting there in front of it just like staring at the video like just for the sake of getting views. Like that's just, that's wrong. Don't do that kind of stuff. Um, but you know, you could do like clickbait kind of stuff, but it just has to kind of be a fun way to do clickbait. Um, you know, that's that's fine. So you have to create your create your title that's, uh, that's going to link best to uh, what your the message that you're trying to uh, trying to express in your video uh, next is to write the description that's right next to, uh, that's right under that this is important this is a YouTube algorithm tip and this is a YouTube algorithm must you have to do this in the first three lines it sounds crazy in the first three lines of the description are some of the most important things yes tripod reviews hashtag nudes <laughs> Um, the most important thing in your description is the first three lines. Sounds weird. What you need to do in the first three lines of your description is you need to repeat your title. Um, it can be in the same exact order that you have your title in. Um, in the title, you can say like the best budget headphones, question mark, alien M8 review. Or you can kind of repose the, you know, restructure the sentence in a different way as long as it has all the words that's in the title within the first three lines. So you can say like, in this alien, you know, in this review, I or I review the Alien M8 headphones, and I pose, and is it the best budget headphones that you can get on the market? Question mark. You can do that, um, but it has to be within the first three lines. Your title has to be within the first three lines. It's how the YouTube algorithm finds you, because if you think about when you do a search on YouTube, you'll have a video that comes up, and then the description. So you have like your picture and stuff that's right here. The description is right here next to it. That's the first three lines. So that is how YouTube finds you. That's how the YouTube algorithm finds you. And it has to repeat. Your title has to be in your description. You have to do this. It is, it's not an option. If you want to get discovered, this is one of the number one things that YouTube algorithm looks for to get discovered. This helps you get into the suggested page area, which means that if you... If you uh, type in a video and you watch a video, like I love Casey Neistat, I watch his stuff all the time. And if you watch a video of him, there's a suggested video of the next videos that come up. That's the suggested video section. You have the option to show up in certain videos, in certain uh, searches, 
as long as you have your title matches your description because it's easy for the algorithm to find you. Please do this, okay? Please, please, please do this. Uh, next thing you have to do is to tag your videos. There's a science behind how you tag videos, by the way. Um, this is something, if you have a pen and paper, get it because I have a specific order that I have to give you something. Um, you don't have to write this down. You can just, you can listen to this and then you can go back and listen to this part of it um, again. Um, but there is a specific order. So if you really want to, um, yeah, he's creeping back there, John. Um, if you want to know this order, then please write this down. To tag your videos is how you rank your videos. That's how YouTube algorithm ranks your videos. Um, and what I mean by ranking is that when you type in something into the YouTube search, whatever comes up on the opposite end of that search and the other side of that search is a video ranking of the number one video, number two, the second video you see, the third video you see, the fourth video you see, the fifth video you see, all the way until the end of that list, which usually is usually in the hundreds of thousands of videos, sometimes in the millions of videos, depending on what you're searching for. That is your rank. That's your rank. You want to try to get on that first page, which is 20 things. You want to try to get on that first page because people typically don't scroll down past and get to that second page. Your tags are how you rank. Ranking gets you exposure. Exposure gets you views. Views gets you subscribers. Subscribers helps you grow. Tagging is one of the most important things that you can do for videos. Please listen to this part, okay? Here's how you rank. First thing that you need to do in this order, the first tags that you do is you will type in your channel name. So for me, I'll type in JD Tech TV, all is one word, and then I'll type in another tag that says JD Tech TV, separated by spaces, because sometimes people will type my channel in that way because that's how Google, uh, Google Plus structures it. Really, as far as my branding, as far as my business is concerned, it's all together. Um, but Google says decided to put spaces in between that, so whatever, it's not a big deal. Then next, I put my name, uh, because people that know my name, it's easier for them to find me. Um, you don't have to do that, but that's perfectly okay. Um, the next thing that you need to do, the next set of tags that you need to do is your title. So you need to tag your title in the exact way that it is written. So again, I'll use the example of the Alien M8 headphones. The title was the best budget headphones, Alien M8 review. And there's a dash in between that. You don't need to put the dash in the tag. So one tag, will be the best budget headphones. Another tag will be Alien M8 Review. That's my title. Those are the title tags. The very next tags are called compound tags. These are tags to where you're basically you're thinking about how somebody searches for something. You're thinking about what somebody is going to search for in order to find your video. So you can write a, new, a number of things. You can write, um, you can type in a tag for, you know, like I said, the best budget headphones. Um, you can type in budget headphones. You can type in top budget headphones. You can type in best budget headphones 2017, which by the way, typing in a year is very helpful. Keep that one in mind. Typing in 2017 is very helpful for you. Um, there's a number of ways that you can type in compound tags, but basically this is just how somebody would search for your video. So just a good practice to do is to just to go onto YouTube and just start typing in a whole bunch of stuff. Just search for something and see what videos are coming up more, most common in the different types of way that you're searching for something. So just th that's something I can't really tell you how to, how to compound tag for your specific videos unless I was looking at it. But just think about it as how you're searching for videos. That's, those are compound tags. Next, specific tags. These are one word tags that are basically you're separating out your compound tags and you're creating separate specific tags. So you would have best, budget headphones. Those are three different tags. You'd have 2017, you'd have review, tech, unboxing. So even though I'm not doing an unboxing, I'm still within the tech space and I'm still going to type in a tag of unboxing because somebody else might be looking for, uh, you know, uh, budget head, or, you know, headphone unboxings. They'll find my channel and they'll find my video because I typed in headphone unboxing and they just, the YouTube algorithm grabbed both of those things and combined it into one thing and let me show up and rank on the video. So it's all one thing. Remember, type in the year. That's a good one. Um, next thing is gonna be, uh, last one is misspell tags. I don't always use this one because I feel, 
I might be biased, but I feel that the people who are looking for tech and in the tech space, if you're looking for reviews on things, you tend to be pretty proficient in technology in order to know that you need to look for reviews in the first place. And again, I might be a little biased and I could be wrong, but I tend to believe that people that are interested in tech tend to be a little bit more on the intelligent side of things. So I just tend to assume that people who are interested in tech, they know how to spell and they're pretty okay and they're all right at it. Um, they might not be the best spellers, but they know how to put a sentence together. It's fine. Um, sometimes I'll do it if I think that a word is easily misspelled. If there's typically an I and an E that gets switched a lot and just normally in the English language it's because it's, it's rather confusing. Um, then sometimes I'll do that. I'll misspell a word and I'll misspell my title or I'll misspell a tag. But I, I usually don't do this. Um, but if I have room in the tag space, um, you can only have 500 characters within the tag space, by the way. But if I... If I have space, then I'll do it. I'll type in a misspell tag. So in that order, that's a very specific order and YouTube algorithm favors this order of your channel, your title and tags, compound tags, specific tags, and then misspell tags in that order. Please do this. I'm not kidding. This is what YouTube looks for, okay? This is gonna help you. Uh, next thing you do is you want to take advantage of all of the things that um, YouTube allows you to do as far as within the editing uh, situation. So it'll allow you to add things called um, end screens, which means that at the... Uh, what's up, Candatech? What's up? Um, you're, you're here kind of like a little bit towards the end of this stuff, but the q and is coming up, so you'll be able to ask some questions. And um, on you need to add end screens, which basically means that at the last... Um, <laughs> he did miss a night. Candid, you did miss a really nice tip, but you'll be able to look at this on the replay. It's fine. Um, the end screens basically means that the last 20 seconds of your video, you'll be allowed to put like little markers. So you'll see in mine, I have like my, my logo that's in one corner, which is a subscribe button. And then I usually put two videos that basically, the whole purpose of that is just to allow people to find different things in your channel. It's just a good idea to do it. It's not required, but why not? You know, why not bring people to, because in the next suggested video thing, it might not put up your video. It might not. It usually does for the next one. Usually it does. If you have enough content, it usually does, but it doesn't always do that. So <clears throat> putting your videos in, in, just pick two of them. That's fine. It has a couple different options to where you can link it to somebody else's video, which is a nice thing to do, by the way. That's a good thing to do. Um, that's a good strategy. Um, also just a nice thing to do. Um, or you can put your video, your one of your videos up here, or you can do like a best uh, best for viewer. So you'll allow YouTube to decide in your videos which one based off of the things that they have watched in their history, they'll be able to, it'll put up a video that will probably be best for them to watch. I don't always trust that a lot of times because a lot of the, the videos that I put are the ones that I wanna drive traffic to because they might have low views, they might be new, and I wanna kind of, allow it to kickstart and go up and I want it to allow to be able to call back to old videos that I I want people to see so usually I will decide which videos that I put up there so make sure that you're using your end screens um, also use your cards which those are always the little I don't know which side it is depending on which side you're seeing <coughs> those are little things that you'll see that will come up the little gray kind of like text that will come up that usually says like hey suggest a video for this kind of thing that's just another way for people to interact with you in, during your videos. And usually what I do, depending on what I'm talking about throughout the video, I tend to put up another video or a poll of some kind that basically forces, uh, allows people to interact with the video. Um, I'll put another video up that just basically drives more traffic to other videos on my channel. That's always a good idea. Um, again, not required to be part of the YouTube algorithm but it's really great for your SEO, which is search engine optimization. Um, that's that's really great for that. So you need to make sure that you're putting in cards in there as well and uh, just pulling people back to your channel, not just for that one video. Uh, next thing is to add a video to a playlist. So if you don't have playlists, you're doing it wrong. Sorry, you are. Um, because the YouTube algorithm, once again, favors playlists. It's one of the top things that it does right now. Um, the next thing uh, that I'm going to talk about is uh, going to be the very top thing that it discusses. 
but playlists are huge. Um, so for tech reviews, I put uh, I have a playlist called Tech Reviews to where I put all of my. Um, can you give the following thirteen people in the stream a channel shout out? Um, I actually have certain people in the description down below uh, for a channel shout out um, specifically. So if you want to check those out, um, I can't quite do it for everybody, um, but I will uh, be able to. Actually, whatever. Everyone that's on here, I don't see why you can't do that. Just go and look at all the other people's channels that are in here. For sure, do that. Um, there you go. <laughs> so, <clears throat> need to add things to playlists. Um, I add all of my all of my videos, all of my videos to my tech reviews. Um, I also have different types of um, different types of playlists that like impressions. I have certain the best tech, uh, which is a series that I do. I do that once a month at the beginning of the month. I have the best tech series, so I have a playlist for that, and I'll put things in there. Um, but I also put those best tech videos in my tech reviews as well, so you can find them in multiple different places. Uh, basically, YouTube wants you to think of um, think of itself, think of a YouTube as a television program, because that's the way that it's trending. YouTube TV is in select markets. It's becoming, uh, it's going to be part of the around the country here pretty soon. Um, I have inside inside information that that's coming a lot sooner than you might think that it is. Um, but it's in select markets right now. It's in like five cities right now. Um, but YouTube is wanting to treat itself and think of itself as more of a television station. So if you have playlists, then what they want you to do is to find a video within a playlist. And it's easier for the algorithm to determine the next video that it goes down to. So the things that you want to do is you want to try to make it as easy as possible for the YouTube algorithm to find you playlists are favored because it's easy for it to go straight down all the way down and it's basically like the next show that you're watching it's the next thing that you're watching it's the next channel lineup it's the next show that comes up in the next time slot that's the way that it wants to think of it and that's the way you need to think of it as well um, next thing is uh, creating custom subtitles YouTube and Google will provide subtitles for you it basically takes everything that you are saying and gives a rough approximation of what you're trying to say. It does a pretty good job. Uh, that That's getting better over time to where you don't have to do custom subtitles. Maybe like in a year that'll be better. But as the AI and as the uh, YouTube algorithm Skynet like gets better and smarter, um, you won't have to do custom subtitles. But as of right now, you should and you do. Um, so you'll go into the subtitle section under the edit part of your video and just click the subtitle part and then you'll be able to edit it from there and it'll give you literally a breakdown line by line per second of what it thinks that you're saying. You can just go in there and then you can correct it. You can type in uh, different types of things. Okay. Um, you can, from then you can publish that and basically you're just allowing uh, the YouTube algorithm to understand what you're saying better. The reason why you do this is because when somebody Google searches for something Google can't just look at a video because what Google's trying to do is they're trying to push content um, out for videos. They're trying to favor videos. Whenever you're searching for something, if you ever search for something, you notice that a lot of videos will come up, not just websites. Videos will start coming up because that's the medium that they want to try to push. That's where they're pushing into because YouTube is becoming larger. So it's, it's impossible for Google to be able to understand what videos that it needs to go and search for if it can't understand what you're saying. So the custom subtitles are important for that specific reason because then it'll be able to read, literally read what you said in the video. It'll be able to better uh, place you into the Google search and people will be able to find you simply by doing Google searches because you have subtitles and it'll push your video to the front of the, uh, of the front pages because you have uh, the subtitles and it's a clear message um, for that algorithm. So subtitles are incredibly important. Uh, lastly, creating a thumbnail. Now, I use, I mean, I have the Adobe suite. I have like the Adobe um, whole suite that it's like, it's only like 20 bucks a month. I mean, you can pay for it like yearly. Uh, it's like 240 bucks a year or you can just do $20 a month. That's, that's fine. Um, in the grand scheme of a month, 20 bucks is really not all that bad. Um, I, I mean, for I'm not discounting that because for some of you, 20 bucks is, is tough. I was, you know, it's, it is for me too. I get it. But if you're wanting to invest, again, if you're wanting to invest in your channel, if you wanted to invest in good editing software, um, Adobe Premiere uh, CC is great. It's only 20 bucks a month. 
and it does everything that you need to do. If you have a Mac doing the same thing for Final Cut Pro, it's, a, it's the same type of thing. You can do a subscription plan and it does it month to month like that. You can just cancel whenever. Um, that's always an option. Um, so you can, so within the Adobe suite, you have Photoshop and Photoshop is great. You can do that, but it's kind of takes some knowledge to utilize it correctly. So kind of what I do, and I could use Photoshop, but it's just, it's more involved than I really need my, uh, I really need my thumbnails to be at the moment. At, at some point I'll do that and I'll just, I'll kind of make them a little bit better. But for right now, I use a website called Canva, C-A-N-V-A dot com again link is below in the description you'll be able to find it there it's a free site and it gives you templates for everything it gives you templates for Instagram for Twitter for Facebook and it does all the aspect ratios that's associated with each thing so what you do to make a YouTube one is in the top right after you create a, a username and password it's free um, in the top right section you'll see a custom dimensions button click the custom dimensions button and the dimensions that you're going to use are the 1080p uh, dimensions of 1920 by 1080. Again, the dimensions are 1920, 1920 by, which is next, by 1080, 1080. And that's going to give you the aspect ratio of what you're seeing right now on your phone or on your PC. It gives you this nice aspect ratio. So it's going to give you the correct parameters that you need to make your thing. So, um, yeah, HitFilm, HitFilm for Express is great as well. I, I absolutely agree. GIMP is fantastic as well. Absolutely agree. Um, Canva is fantastic because it makes it very simple and easy for you to use. Check that out. That's the one that I use. That's how I make my um, that's how I make my thumbnails. Um, inside tip for your thumbnails is to when you go into especially specifically on Canva, and you can do this on other uh, software as well. Specifically on Canva, there's a filter button and there's an advanced section which you want to pull up the saturation about 15% and you want to pull down the blur about 15%. Um, there's a lot of studies that goes into that because your your thumbnails are shrinking down and it's becoming a lot smaller. So you want to add a little bit more colors to make sure that the colors are popping. Um, you want to create a lot of high contrast, a lot of like depending on what the background is. See, this is like a dull, if I did a this kind of thing, there's a dull background back here. So you want to put like reds and blacks and whites and stuff that like pops off of the um, off of the, the image. And then you want to pull the blur down because that sharpens the image and that allows you for whenever the image gets shrunken, it still keeps those edges really nice and clean. It keeps everything really clean and crisp. So it's a lot more attractive to the eye. It's easier to see everything whenever the thumbnail gets shrunken. So in any software that you use, pull up the saturation about 15%, pull down the blur about 15%. Okay, that's a good little inside tip. Um, after you're done with all that, publish. Now it's time to publish. Um, you can publish it right then, or you can schedule it to be published at a certain date, which is what I do. I usually publish, I usually put all my videos and, and get it all worked out by Wednesday, and I publish it for Friday. I set a specific time, which is a good idea because I post right at noon, Eastern Standard Time, every single Friday, so that, again, that helps the algorithm, helps you within the algorithm uh, figure out exactly um, because they'll know exactly that you're going to be there at that exact specific time. So scheduling is actually a pretty good idea. Um, this is the last section that I'm going to go through. Last section. And this one is how to promote. Um, this is probably a big one for a lot of you and how to grow your channel um, is how to promote yourself. This one's just going to talk about like social media and things like that. So uh, for your social media, if you're not on every platform, you need to get on every single platform. Um, yes, Canva is also an app. You can do Canva on your phone, but I don't, I actually recommend doing that on your PC. You get a little bit more control that way, you get a little bit more precise control. Um, it's a little bit more difficult to use on your phone. So uh, yes, uh, Matt is right, you can do it as an app or you can do it on the PC. I recommend doing it on your computer. Uh, but <clears throat> for your social media, <laughs> if you're not on every single piece of, uh, every single type of social media, uh, what are you doing? Why, why are you doing this? You need to get out there. Get on Facebook. Get on First of all, at least get on the big three. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Get on those, okay? Um, Snapchat is still relevant. However, Instagram is sort of taking over that a little bit. So I'm not on Snapchat. I have a Snapchat, but I'm not, I don't really do anything with it because I kind of see that Instagram is kind of becoming uh, an all-encompassing medium for different types of things that uh, Snapchat does, for Facebook does, that... Twitter does. They're all trying to mimic one another right now. 
um, at least get on the big three. There's also things like Pinterest, Tumblr, um, all different kinds of stuff. You can do LinkedIn, I guess, if you want, but eh, all right. Um, so the big thing is whenever you're trying to promote yourself and you're trying to let people know that your content is out, do not, and I repeat, do not post at the same time on different social medias. You have to post at different times uh, because you're, if you have people that follow you on, so for this sake, talk about the big three of Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. If you have people that follow you on each one of those things, guess who sees the exact same thing all at the same time? All of these people. They get all notifications for this exact same thing. That's dull. That's boring. They want specific types of content for each specific medium. Okay? And how you determine what type of content that you put on each one of these things depends on which medium it is. So for Instagram, for Instagram, Instagram is more, uh, think of it as more of like a personal look into your life. So if you have an Instagram account and if your profile picture is not your face, change it to your face right now because Instagram is personal. It is not a business thing. So if you have like your channel or something like that, or if you have like a stylized version of you that's not your face, make it your face. Listen to me. Look at how the head is nodding. Make it your face. I don't care if your face is as ugly as this thing right here. Make it your face right now. You have to do this because it's personal. So when you post things on Instagram, you have to combine your business and your personal life. So a lot of things. So Instagram stories are incredibly important. You need to post multiple times a day on the Instagram stories, three to five times. And it could just be something stupid. You could just take a picture of something of whatever you're eating. You could take a picture of your feet. You can take a picture of where you're driving. Um, actually, don't do that because don't drive and take pictures of on Instagram at the same time. Don't do that. Um, if you're in the passenger seat, take a picture of who's driving or whatever. You know what I mean? Um, these are all actually really great tips from Jonathan Sintez. He is a Instagram wizard, by the way. So all of this stuff is kind of coming from him. Uh, post three to five times on your Instagram story. Also, Instagram Live is very powerful to where basically you can just sit there and you just talk to people. It gains exposure. Um, so you need to mix in, you need to put a lot of personal stuff. So a lot of your personal pictures and a lot of your life uh, needs to be exposed on Instagram. You need to be comfortable with transparency. You need to be comfortable with letting people into your life and seeing what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. So I'll post, I'll post things of things that my wife and I do, post things that I'm eating, uh, post shows that I'm watching, post whatever. And then I also post like stuff like, you know, like this stuff, like this lighting kind of stuff that I have, stuff for YouTube. I'll post that a new video is up. Um, you have to mix those two things. Uh, Twitter is a little bit more of like a quick, I mean, you all know what Twitter is. It's, a, it's 140 characters. It's quick, quip, quippy, kind of like short sentences. And basically Twitter is all about information and it's about short in information. So all they want, all people want from Twitter is they want pictures and they want videos and they don't really care about the text because it's only 140 characters unless you can be unless you're witty unless you have like a witty sense of humor or something like that or you have a really good turn on uh, uh, you can turn a phrase really well sure write a bunch of stuff on it on Twitter that's fine but the Twitter algorithm favors pictures and videos so think about that with what you're posting on there Facebook is more of a long form version of Twitter um, it allows you to kind of express your thoughts in a more complete way and do it in that way. So you can post longer things, you can post longer thoughts, longer posts, but still, once again, post videos and pictures on there with almost every single post that you uh, that you put on there. And Facebook Live is very powerful as well. It's getting huge right now. Twitter's trying to catch, or uh, rather, uh, Instagram is trying to catch up. Facebook Live is kicking its ass right now. Um, because Facebook ads are so powerful as well. So Facebook Live, Facebook ads are kind of one-on-one -on -one with one another. Um, those things are very important. So when you're deciding of when to post, because you can't post at the same time, keep that in mind, can't post at the same time. Uh, so when you're deciding when to post, as far as what's the best time to post your um, things on your social media. For Instagram, Instagram tends to, it's, there's not really a bad time to post on Instagram. You can kind of like tailor it towards like the end of the day because 
or really all day rather, but the largest engagement in, in Instagram is kind of towards the end of the night from 8 p.m. kind of into the middle of the night until like two o'clock in the morning. So Instagram is all about people because it's so social. It's made for a social life. So people who have social lives are typically out past 8 p.m. and that's what they're using. They're taking pictures, they're looking at stuff, and they're sitting there talking on their phones in a group of people without talking to each other and it's stupid. Um, stop doing that if you're one of those people, by the way. For sure, talk to somebody. Um, but that's where people are most interacting with. Uh, Instagram is kind of towards the middle of the night. So if you want to post like before you go to bed or something like that, a lot of stuff, that's fine. You'll get a lot of interactions then. Twitter is typically Monday through Friday around 3 p.m. at whatever time zone that you're in. It's not Eastern Standard Time, Pacific, Mountain, whatever. It's 3 p.m. at the time zone that you are sitting in, uh, Monday through Friday. Those are usually the best times to post on Twitter. The best times to post for Facebook are Monday through Thursday, same time, 3 p.m. in your time zone. So keep that in mind um, when at the time that you wanna post and what days you wanna post for your social media. Um, Instagram, you can post any day of the week, it's fine. Um, the strategy for what you wanna do is you need to pick one that you have the largest followers. So whenever you upload your video, post a, uh, a notification to the one that you have the largest followers on. Um, I do that to Instagram because I have the largest followers there. So I'll always post and say like, hey, new video went up. Then two hours later, I will post on Facebook because it's a little bit more long form and I have a lot of friends on there. So I'll do that next. And then my smallest audience on Twitter, which I think I'll end up growing that here pretty soon. I'll need to dedicate a lot of time to doing that. Um, then I'll post on Twitter the following day because I already exposed my audience to my video on that one day. So there's really no reason to do it a third time on a single day. You need to you need to let that video live on YouTube for one day. Let it live there. Let it go through the algorithm. Let it breathe through the algorithm. Let it kind of change where it's going to be. And then you want to add more exposure. Once it's already in the algorithm, add more exposure by posting on a third, fourth, fifth, sixth uh, social media account each following day. So, you know, if you have three, post on post on two on one day, two hours apart, then post on the third one the next day. If you have a fourth um, uh, social media account, post on, uh, post on that one the following day and so on and so forth all the way up until the following week until you post another video. Um, that's just gonna drive traffic on a consistent basis to your video on YouTube and that will help in the algorithm, okay? That helps. So don't post all on your uh, social medias all at the same time. Stagger it out if you're going to post on the same day. At least do it at least two hours apart. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, you need to make sure that you post consistently. That helps you be on YouTube more. Um, this is an important one. Oh, collaboration. That's that's huge. Super huge. Um, that's a big reason why I was able to get to the point that I am right now. Of I mean, I don't know how many subscribers that I have at this specific moment. I'm gonna see if I can look at that. Um, it's getting closer to 2,000. Um, my subscriber count right now is 1,716. Um, I went up about 500 subscribers because I got to know this incredible YouTube vlogger called Justin Bravo, which if you wanna check out his channel, again, in the description down below, I would highly recommend that you do. Um, you can, uh, you can collaborate with these people and they will mention you in some of their videos and that will drive traffic to your channel and then you want to do the same thing in return, drive traffic back to them or pay it forward by mentioning a different YouTuber um, and try to pay it forward by uh, driving traffic to someone else. And how you do that, th this is important. It needs to not be artificial. It needs to not be fake. It needs to not be disingenuous. The way that you, the easiest way to get a collaboration with somebody is to go to their channel, a channel that you like, genuinely like, you like uh, watching their videos, comment, 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 engage with them and befriend them. And don't do it because, by the way, I'm not going to name names, but I know the people who comment on my channels, uh, on my, all of my videos regularly. I know the ones that are genuine. 
and I know the ones that have ulterior motives. Now, of course, I'm going to respond to everyone um, always, and I'll treat everyone fairly. I'll treat everyone the exact same way because that's how I want to be treated. I want to be treated in the way that I'm treating you. So I will always respond to everybody. I think that's incredibly, incredibly important. What's up, Penny? Um, I will I will always respond to everyone, but the people that are responding to me, I, I know. I know what you're doing sometimes. I know that you have ulterior motives. Stop it because I, I'm not going to collaborate um, with you in, in, in that manner because I kind of see that you are only doing it for your own interest. The people that I'm going to collaborate with are people that I befriend and the people that I find value and that they're giving me value. They're giving me friendship and that's what you need to do for other YouTubers. You need to give them something. You need to watch their videos. You need to give them uh, your, your views. You need to give them your likes, shares, comments, positivity. You need to express positivity. You need to encourage them. You need to make them feel good about what they're doing because not just for the sake of your own self-interest because that's not what I do with like for Justin for example I really like his vlog like really really like his vlog a lot it's um, it's up there with like the Casey Neistat kind of like level like I love it it's really good and just like all of the other uh, vloggers and YouTubers and everything that are in the description same thing love their stuff genuinely love their stuff and these people could not be better people because I've gotten to know them through commenting. They always respond back and we've kind of gained these friendships over the course of a couple of months. And it's been a pleasure doing that. And even if YouTube stopped today, if it stopped today, I would still want to know these people. I would still want to be friends with these people and keep in contact with them and encourage them and, and all of this stuff. So the way that you get these friendships um, needs to be your intent needs to be pure, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, you need to make sure that you're doing these for the right reasons. You're doing it for strictly to encourage them and to give them good positivity on a daily basis or on a weekly basis, depending on how often they post. In return, potentially, in return, they might approach you and say like, hey man, like your channel too, you're always really nice and positive. Do you mind if I mention you in a video? Do you mind if I push people through your channel? Do you mind if I, if we collaborate, can we work on something together? Because in the YouTube space, that's a common thing. People do that all the time. So they, they have to, and by the way, Matt is one of those people too. He can, can I stop and say something? Because Matt, I'm so sorry. I did not put you in the link, uh, in the description below and I will do this after the video because I, I failed to put you in there brother I am so sorry Matt's vlog is hilarious I love his stuff he has a really unique twist on the vlog um, he does it almost every day and it's just it's phenomenal absolutely love it please go the the mister uh, the mister divisel uh, love that the, the mister divisel his name's Matt please go check out his vlog it's fantastic um, so when they ask you to do these things, they ask you to do these collaborations. Um, do your best not to ask if the, if you can collaborate with them on something. It's usually best to wait for them to to, to ask you about it. Um, or what you can do is you can just mention them in one of your videos, and then just send them a message. Just be like, hey man, just I mentioned you in my video. Um, I like your stuff. I just thought that you know I, I should mention you for whatever reason. Insert reason here. You know, I've done that for a couple of people. I did that for Jason um, at JSL Reviews uh, because I, I love love his stuff. It's awesome. It's it's worth being known. So I, I let him know uh, that in my thousand subscriber video, I mentioned him and that I want people to go into his channel. Um, Justin Bravo did something similar um, to where I mentioned him in one of my uh, videos, and he did the same thing to me. He did a shout out for me, and he pushed about 500 subscribers over to my channel, like like that. Like, that's what happens. So if you create these collaborations, you can cross-promote and get each one of your audiences to discover one another, and you can grow together. That's the thing. You're not in it for you. You're in it for the group. You're in it for the tribe. And that's what you need to think about on YouTube is that you're creating a tribe. You're creating a group for me, a group of positive people, of good people who genuinely want other people to succeed. And through that altruistic nature, you will succeed. You will have self-fulfillment and you will have self, your creativity will just 
explode because you have other people supporting you and you have a support group that is there to help you catapult you forward and you're there to do the same for other people. This is vitally, vitally important and something that you should not take lightly. You have to befriend people genuinely, genuinely, because you care about them being successful and through that, you will be successful because they will help you as well, okay? Um, that's kind of it. Uh, before we get to the Q&A, um, just kind of quick overview, final thoughts is um, you need to <clears throat> you need to think about um, you need to think about um, no disrespect brother um, you need to think about uh, why here I'm just going to read this stuff instead of because this will make me go faster because I tend to get off on tangents um, why are you on YouTube and your intention you need to have pure intentions uh, like I discussed with the collaborations your intentions need to be pure uh, genuinely share a story that you want to tell. Don't share a story that you think that people want to hear. Share a story that you want to tell, that you want to express in the medium, and people will find you. People will be able to collaborate with you. They will find you, and they will love what you're doing. You just have to work to let them know that you exist. Do what you love, and others will find you in return. Um, because always good content will... Um, it'll always find its way, period. It, it just it just always will. Um, if you're doing it for monetary gain only, you will lose. Um, it just simply takes too long. You'll lose interest and you'll try to go find something else to make money. So you have to do this for the passion. The money will come um, if you're smart about it. But you have to do this for the love and then other things kind of come from that. Um, you need to do it for the passion of storytelling um, on a visual medium. I already kind of touched on that. Um, you need to have patience for the craft and put the time in to see the financial kickback. I just said that, um, which I see I go up on the tangents and I don't read this. Um, do the things for the sake of helping others. Again, went over that. And lastly, last thing, I promise, last thing before we get to the Q&A. Um, this is one of my favorite quotes. It's from Winston Churchill. Perfection is the enemy of progress. So when you're thinking about your videos and you're thinking about putting out your videos or you haven't quite started a YouTube channel yet if you're sitting there wondering if you should do it and you might have videos or you might have an idea and you're just thinking to yourself it needs to be better it needs to be perfect in order to put it out because I'm afraid of what people will say if it's not perfect I'm afraid of being judged stop perfection is the enemy of progress you just have to start that's the biggest thing that I can tell you about a YouTube channel is to just start hold yourself accountable put a video out there set yourself a time limit put say like i will absolutely post once a week and i'm going to stick to that i'm going to put that first video out because now since that video is out i am holding myself accountable and say in the video by the way that you will post once a week because that lets the audience know that you're going to be there for them and they will also by the way hold you accountable if anybody if i ever didn't uh post a video on a Friday, you bet your ass I'm gonna have some people asking me questions of where's my video, what are you doing, are you okay? And I might lose subscribers. So you have to think about that and stop being so afraid of success and stop being so afraid of what you want. Don't think about what other people think about you. Don't think about what other people think about YouTube. Don't think about what family thinks about you and doing a YouTube career and you doing YouTube videos. If you love it, absolutely, 100% do it and start today. All of this information starts today. You have to apply this to your YouTube channel today. This is not an option anymore. If you are here, you are serious about making your YouTube channel a career. You can do this. I know you can do this because I'm working at this and I've only been doing this for 90 days and I can see the light at the end of the tunnel already. For the things that I'm able to do, the things, the community that I have created, you can do this. I know you can do this. And I will be here every step of the way for you. I will make sure that all the people that are here and all the people that will be here in the, that were in the past, here currently, in the future, I am here to help you. So I'm a tech reviewer. I'm a YouTuber. And you can do whatever you want to do on this medium and know that you have somebody here, me. You have somebody here that is always going to support you and that is always going to help you 
progress. I am always here for you. That's what this video was about. This video was for you specifically to help you grow. So in saying that, uh, I'm done with all that stuff. Um, it's Thank you so much for all of you that stayed. This was way longer than I thought it would be. Um, it's a lot of information that I got to. So question and answer time. This is the Q&A section. Um, I'm actually going to move this over just a touch so I can see my comments a little bit easier. So I have, uh, James, are you still here right now? Because I think Jason ended up leaving. Um, yeah, I think James is here. I wanted to kind of get to these kind of things first. I don't know if Jonathan is still here. I want to get you guys first. Um, if you, James, if you have any questions, um, please let me know. I'd be more than healthy, uh, more than happy to answer them for you. Um, go ahead, man. Drop a question. I want to get to the people who uh, were nice enough to donate to the channel with a super chat, which by the way, for those of you that are new and you don't know, this channel and this video right now is part of what's something called a super chat, which means that there's a little dollar sign that's at the bottom of the chat window, which allows you to donate to the channel, um, any denomination, uh, like $1, it could be $1 literally, or it can be you know any denomination that you choose. Basically what that money goes to is that goes to helping me continue the channel because this is very expensive to uh, to keep this going. And um, <laughs> changing the sun. Um, it's very expensive to keep this going and it allows me to have the financial freedom to be able to bring you better tech and allows me to have the financial freedom to uh, post more, which gives you more content. So the more that you are able to uh, kindly donate to me, the more information and the more content I'm able to provide for you. So that's what this uh, super chat is all about. Also, if you do donate, it also keeps your comments highlighted for longer and I'm always gonna get to your questions first, okay? Um, James is changing his son, so let's go ahead and get to other questions. Um, let's go ahead and get to Matt. So uh, he says, have you used Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube ads to boost your traffic? How do you get more traffic to your videos? Yeah. Um, I've used uh, the beauty, like I said before, the beauty of the, um, <laughs> Raven, it's all good, man. You don't have to donate, it's all good. Um, the beauty of Facebook ads, which Facebook ads is killing it right now, absolutely killing it. That's something that you should absolutely be looking into. Um, if you uh, put an ad out on Facebook and you link your Instagram page uh, with, your Facebook, uh, with your Facebook account and vice versa, if you take an ad out on Facebook, it also will push that ad to Instagram. So you don't have to have take out an ad on both of them. You just take out it on, on Facebook and it pushes over into Instagram. It's awesome. It's fantastic. Um, you can do that. There's real power in that. However, the uh, there's a process of how to get views off of Facebook ads. It's not as easy as just simply just making an ad um, and just putting it out there. There's certain strategies that goes into that. I I definitely have, uh, I definitely suggest going on YouTube and just typing in uh, strategies for Facebook ads. It's, uh, it's a thing that I've done as well and I've been able to kind of get a lot of growth off of that. A lot of it is like a trial and error, Matt. Um, it's a trial and error of trying to figure out what what is gonna work and just start with like five bucks. Just do like five bucks here and there. You don't have to do this like really huge, uh, really huge type of like amount of money to go on there to get any kind of success. Like anytime that I do ads, it's five bucks. It's not really all that much. Um, the most that I've ever spent on ads is like $20. And even that, I didn't even need to do that. I could have spent $3 and it would have been just as effective. Um, so a lot of this is like kind of playing around uh, with trying to figure it out. So just go on YouTube and try to look up Facebook ads and how to structure them there because there is a way to do that and there's a much longer explanation than I should you know kind of a lot for uh, for this specific medium um, my phone is going to die here shortly so what I'm gonna do just give me one second I'm actually going to unplug this mic so I'll use the mic that's on the phone and I'm gonna plug in a um, I'm gonna plug in a uh, power cable so one second okay technical difficulties <laughs> so, sorry guys you'll have to I'll have to excuse this <laughs> 